everything about the Wednesday girls, Jenna Ortega and Gwendolyn Christie. You may know Jenna Ortega and Gwendolyn Christie as Wednesday Adams cast from the Netflix series. It's also possible that you've seen Jenna in films like Scream and The Babysitter, Killer Queen. The young actress, whichever way you look at it, is creating quite a name for herself in the scary movie industry. However, where did they begin their career exactly? And how did they get the part in the series Wednesday? Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. As we know, the Netflix series is hitting all the checks for being the most watched series, and it's only because of the two extraordinary actresses. So without further ado, let's get to know them. I know you all are anxious about the famous Wednesday star Jenna Ortega, and yes, I will talk about her first. Hollywood has taken notice of Jenna Ortega, an American actress and voice actor who has made a name for herself in cinema and television. She starred in the Disney Channel series Stuck in the Middle as Harley Diaz, Young Jane in Jane the Virgin, and Elodie Davis in You. In addition to Iron Man 3, The Fallout, and Max Winslow in The House of Secrets all include Ortega in supporting roles. Ortega is well known not only for her acting, but also for her advocacy and involvement in several important topics. Due to her captivating dancing in the Wednesday Netflix series, she recently gained widespread internet attention. Wednesday, created by Tim Burton for Netflix, starred Jenna Ortega as Wednesday Adams, and ever since its debut on November 23rd, it's been gaining unprecedented attention and viewings. In the Netflix show, her dance routine became viral, and now everyone wants to dance like her. Did you know Ortega's mom posted a video of her daughter to Facebook, which led to her discovery? She started acting at nine, landing her first small role in 2012's The Baby Bug, as stated on IMBD. Since then, we've seen her in films and television shows, including CSI New York, Days of Our Lives, Iron Man 3, and Insidious Chapter 2. The Wednesday actress is up for Best Actress in a Musical or Comedy Series at the 2023 Golden Globes, along with Quinta Brunson, Abbott Elementary, Kaylee Cuoco, The Flight Attendant, Selena Gomez, Only Murders in the Building, and Jean Smart, The Good Wife. She is being honored. Hacks. She said that on Wednesday, 2022, a comedy horror series on Netflix, Ortega's performance as Wednesday Adams was a new chapter in her acting career. She went through the largest physical metamorphosis I've ever done. I cut my hair and it's black, and changed her mannerisms, speaking cadence, expressions as well. She later described her concern and confusion regarding the shows and her character's future during the production of season one, calling it the most daunting job she's ever had. Ortega's turn in the series was well received by audiences and critics alike. Some even called it the best portrayal of the character to date. Moreover, when she voiced Disney's first Latina princess, the famous Wednesday girl changed the course of history. That's exactly right. By voicing Isabel on the Disney Channel's animated series about Disney's first Latina princess, Elena of Avalor, Ortega has made important gains towards representation for Latinas. Since the Wednesday series was a big deal for Ortega, she worked hard for the role. For her part on Wednesday, she had to brush up on her cello skills. Wednesday Adams, when she isn't solving murder mysteries, developing her psychic powers, or writing her novel, can be found outside her dorm room playing the cello beautifully. And Jenna truly practiced and learned to play the instrument just for the part. In a video interview with Wired, Jenna said, I learned to play the cello for series Wednesday. About two months before principal photography began, I began studying cello. Since I've been away from home for business, I'm not in very good playing shape right now, but it is something I plan to continue doing. She continued, I greatly regard everyone who plays the cello. I adore playing this instrument. That's a lot of information on Ortega. Now let's talk about Gwendolyn Christie, who plays Principal Larissa Weems in Burton's new Netflix series Wednesday. But before we move ahead, we would appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. It will help you not to miss any new videos. Gwendolyn Christie came from a middle-class household in Worthing, Sussex, and didn't set out to join the entertainment industry. At the tender age of seven, she enrolled in ballet and gymnastics classes, and her future looked bright until tragedy struck. Her body couldn't keep up with the rigors of her dance training as she rapidly matured and suffered repeated injuries. After suffering a back injury at 11 that prevented her from continuing her dance and gymnastics training, she opted to pursue a career in acting instead. She moved to London and enrolled at Drama Center to pursue acting, but her instructors doubted that someone tall and androgynous could succeed in the industry. 
fans of HBO's Game of Thrones will recognize Gwendolyn Christie most for her role as Brienne of Tarth. In The Force Awakens and The Last Jedi, Christie played Captain Phasma, the capeless, chrome-armored leader of the First Order's stormtrooper forces. She left a brief but memorable impression on audiences. Christie used to compete in rhythmic gymnastics on a semi-professional level. Her career was cut short when, at age 11, she had a debilitating spinal injury that strained all the muscles in her spine, ending her promising career. Christie's portrayal as Brienne of Tarth, one of the most beloved and badass characters of the Game of Thrones series, earned her a legion of fans, including a former president and a pop celebrity. The former president of the United States, Barack Obama, is on record as a fan of Game of Thrones and Christie's character in particular. Madonna, the material girl, is another famous person who likes Christy. Specifically, she had her manager bring Christy to an event as the unapologetic bitch of the night when her Rebel Heart tour came to a close in Sydney, Australia. On stage, Madonna spanked her, and she cracked raunchy remarks about Game of Thrones. Yep, Madonna is the only artist who could get away with spanking Brienne of Tarth and still be taken seriously. Jamie Lannister may be considered a close second. And it was her performance as Leia that ultimately led to Captain Phasma being recast as a female, partly. Christy, a lifelong lover of the franchise, has been actively auditioning for roles in the new Star Wars trilogy even before she heard production had begun. She tried out for several roles, including that of Captain Phasma, head of the First Order Stormtroopers. The only catch is that the role was designed to be played by a man. Nonetheless, the casting directors saw enough potential in Christy to cast her as the lead. Not helping matters was criticism of the latest Star Wars picture for its lack of female characters. Christy has said that the show's hair and makeup crew deserved much credit for her dramatic appearance change. Christy comments, This is the first time I've ever felt gorgeous on camera. Thank you very much to Tim, Colleen, and the rest of our hair and beauty team. Colleen Atwood's work is transformative and on par with witchcraft, so it's no surprise that she's become a legend. Working with Colleen and Tim is one of the greatest privileges of my life. As Larissa Weems, Gwendolyn Christie has a significant role in the show, and Ortega says that working with Christie gave her a new appreciation for the actress. The following is an excerpt from an interview Christie gave to ET Canada in which she discussed Ortega. And Jenna is just fantastic in it. She does an outstanding job. She has tremendous acting chops, is active on stage, and has a powerful presence. She is a formidable force, giving Wednesday her unique perspective. Plus, we'll get a far better look at her this Wednesday than ever. Ortega, co-stars Louise Guzman and Gwendolyn Christie, and showrunners Miles Miller and Al Goff visited the New York Comic-Con studios of TV Guide Magazine and TV Insider to give a sneak peek of the program before its launch. Ortega comments on playing a role that has become iconic through popular culture. I've never portrayed someone who's been done before in previous iterations. And that's unsettling because I know many people and the nostalgia component in particular can put a lot of weight on an activity that should be lighthearted and joyful. Despite the high stakes, Ortega said, I think what was essential to me, or the thing about Wednesday is, yes, while she's deadpan, she's expressionless. I feel there are numerous pathways you could have chosen to create a performance that is still fairly genuine to hers. In addition, we experimented with as many different things as possible and even fooled about a little. However, there comes a time when you have to get on a train and ride with it. That's all for today, folks. We hope you enjoyed knowing everything about the Wednesday Girls. Keep watching for more amazing videos, and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel on your way out. See you next time. Until then, bye.